world of the sports scene and we are coming back to you live here on the touchline Y254 so that we can give you the best of what has been happening this week. As we are starting today on our show here, it's a big mega bronze trophy that is standing right in front of us and we'll be giving you why it is there and what has been happening so you can be getting your thoughts ready and know why this trophy is here with us. But it has been major developments in world football as we are seeing a major swap between Alex and Sanchez and Henrik Mkhitaryan of Manchester United. Will that happen? Robert Osoro here for the touchline today. Top show lined up this particular afternoon. A very, very fantastic Saturday afternoon and welcome to the program. Remember, double two, one six two is our SMS line and remember to join the conversation as well on our social media platforms at Wasike Maxwell at Osoro but at hashtag touchline Y254. Join the conversation. Talk to us. Remember the fan favorite segment, the fan zone coming towards the late round of the program at around 1.30 to 2 p.m. where we're talking about international football with focus on transfers and what's happening as far as European weekend fixtures are concerned. But remember this prestigious accolade you seeing on the table so sorry, Robert told you earlier. Rosemary Capondi, community heroine of the year 2017 as far as sports personality of the awards which happened two days ago at Kenyatta International Conference Center where she bagged for the services giving back to the community. She will be joining us shortly to keep us updated with what she's been doing at Dandora to, you know, uh, deserve being given this. Well, it is a beautiful Saturday afternoon and we go right ahead to the sports pages. But I was forgetting, man. I didn't know this trophy came with another phone. So you have got two phones now. Yeah, two iconic gadgets. And by the way, you're <laughs> forgetting to tell me what <laughs> happened. How was your Christmas and in Yolo? Perfect, man. Perfect, yeah. man. You've taken long. Your financial mm -hmm. muscles were... Uh, top notch. You know, I have got this financial discipline. I save for Christmas. So you save for Christmas. When I go, I go. And you didn't specify. You are not categorical with regards to the country you visited during, you know, festivities. No, I was just in Africa. In Africa? Yeah. Good to have had fun. Of course, it's Osoro Robert who was away for the last two weeks, but I was taking charge. But now, the two Masekitias are together this particular afternoon on the... At night. Remember sports pages. Oh, yeah, sports personality. They are what Samuel Mushai, world Paralympic champion, of course, being crowned the overall sports personality of the year awards, which happened at KICC. And expectedly, of course, a lot of people didn't look forward to his crown beating, you know, compared to Constantinus Kipruto, who emerged that uh, sports personality man of the year, and Helen Obiri, 5,000 uh, world and, you know, double uh, 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 league champion also, yeah. you know, emerging as sportswoman of the year. And Samuel Mushai beat them. Big changes actually. It's been uh, Samuel Mushai winning this one after Henry Wanyoike also won it back in, in the inaugural 2004 when this event was coming up. It's good for them. When you get this chance, you go ahead and do it. The best thing for him is that everybody who won an award at the Sawyer was deserved that award. And it's all, uh, it goes down to what have you been doing to that year. And you remember Samuel Mushai won the T11 championship and he did that very well. So because we are happy that athletics has to win football has to win rugby has to win but if there's someone also is performing in paralympics and they have to win and they deserve to win let them go ahead and win it marvelous speech of course after his victory at kicc in presence of deputy president william ruto and the uh, guest you know invitee in the name of michael court former Rambe stars international who graced the occasion and of course we shall be listening in and see what samuel muchai had to say immediately after he's being crowned the overall champion of sports personality of the year awards 2017 at kcc well that is how the sports pages have started here but we'll be having a big interview on soya awards and how it happened there but on this week also we got the shuja being named as the team that will be playing in the Sydney and the Hamilton Lakes of the HSBC World 7. So who are in this team and who are out of this team? Well, the team will be missing Colin Sinjera, but Amonde is back into that team. And Amonde is back, but remember the standout inclusion, Eric Ombasa of Menengai Oilers. And remember, he was exceptional during 2017 National 7 circuit. And that's why probably it might have informed Innocent Simu, the tactician for Kenya National 7, to include him in the squad. And remember, Oscar Ayodi is mm -hmm. also on the sidelines. And now Oscar Uma is coming in to uh, uh, get the armband as far as the Kenya 7 national team is concerned as they head to Sydney 7 and Hamilton 7 third and fourth leg of the of the HSBC 7 World Series. And we shall be looking forward to blistering performance. Of course, last season it was quite awful, but of course, as stakeholders of rugby game continue saying, 
innocent me has to be given time in order to deliver. Well, the seventh team currently sit 11 in the series with the 10 points after two outs, and that is the Dubai and the Cape Town Sevens. But let's hope that when they go to Sydney, they have been pulled in Group A alongside Argentina, France, and Wales. And the team actually has great names in the likes of Oscar Uma from Top Fry. Nakul will be the captain. Samuel Lech is the assistant captain, I understand is the vice captain there. Dan Sikuta is back. Willie Ambaka, Andrew Amonde, as Maxwell said, Arthur Uwir of KCB, Eden Aguero, Brian Tanga, Jeff Oloch Menengai, and Nelson Ayo are also in that squad. So quite a uh, balanced squad for the National Sevens team as they head to the third leg of HSBC World Seven Series in Sydney towards the end of this month. Innocent Mew naming his charges ahead of the big exercise and we shall be keeping an eye on that and see how it pans out and keep you updated with the progress of the same but remember of course we're still on soya we shall be looking forward to see whether our technical crew can play those absence of deputy president william ruto when he was saying that they will try to you know rescue uh, the state of the sport in the country you know after uh, some betting firms cancelled their local sponsorships <laughs> owing to that five percent taxation plan and he's saying that he will try to eliminate the gaps through 500 million shillings i don't know whether that one is you seem possible. to be one person who was really disturbed when sport pesa said they are not going to sponsor i was this not thing. disturbed yeah why are you saying after some betting oh <laughs> it is sport pesa actually <laughs> of course sport pesa one of the leading betting firms alongside other <laughs> stakeholders they have cancelled a uh, sponsorship due to that five percent taxation slump but for me i think sponsorship in or out the government should fund sports it's not that after the sponsorship is out is when the government it's comes in to yeah it's their duty sports. because all over the world the government first then sponsorship come let's say the government let the government do its part sponsor the teams and all that because they, they represent our country and all that so if we get sponsorship well and good, we are getting more money, but the government has to sponsor. And my prayer and hope is, if the government can start with the 500 million, they give it for, let's say, this financial year and all that, let it be reciprocated to the other years, in that every year now we're getting the government giving in money into the sports world. And from that, now our sports can start growing. But if we depend on companies to sponsor, Back in the day, we had Butter Bullets as a club being sponsored by but It's nowhere to be seen, so we got to change the way we do things. So I hope, and my prayers I've said, can stick to that. And probably you've had clubs that are purported to be sponsored by the government, but they have been crying for of you know yeah. salaries and remunerations of players, Moyas and Talanta, to mention but a few. But I think that bite during sports personality of the year is ready and let's listen in. years ago we never see any person with disability took this position but today I'm very happy many people believe that people with disability they are they are beggars they need to be held in the street or somewhere but tonight I, I want to prove to you as I stand here disability it's not an ability. I can say I'm looking forward to do extra hard and you know it's very hard to boost the country and to get a gold in such a competitions. It's a lot of commitment, discipline, and I'm looking again forward to do extra hard 2017, 2018 season. As a way of encouraging and recognizing the contribution of our sports personalities, we did introduce cash awards that every event that we participate in as a country, and we committed 500 million shillings towards that endeavor. We will continue that process to ensure that all the winners, Kenyans, all Kenyans may not reach them, but on behalf of the people of Kenya, the government of Kenya will provide a cash award as a recognition and as an appreciation of the contribution they make in making our country what it is.
14 years now that the Soya Awards have been happening here in the country and it's proclaimed to be one of the best sports awards that have been happening. And we'll be having the former Harambe Starlets International Team Manager Rosemary Capondi who was declared the community hero in here in studio to talk about the Soya Awards and also her initiative in Dandora. So we'll be having that a little back later. But right now we're going to the FIFA rankings where Harambe Stars managed to climb one position ahead. 105 position despite lack of inactivity and playing giants and probably tournaments which are recognized by world governing body FIFA. Remember they were crowned champions over during the Cup Asina Challenge Cup after beating Zanzibar in penalty shootout at Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos County. But as far as we concerned, this tournament is not recognized by FIFA, neither Cup, but they have you know climbed a position higher to 105 overall. But in the Sakafa region, Uganda still manages to be in top of position with 70, in number 73. And they're also participating in the Chan tournament. I'm shocked. Yeah. Ask me why. <laughs> why? Three Lions <laughs> is not yeah. even among the top five as far as the overall FIFA ranking is concerned. Because Germany, uh -huh. the 2014 World Cup title holders are occupying the top spot, closely followed by five-time world champions Brazil. I think Portugal coming in third uh -huh. after winning Euro. Then Argentina fourth, followed by Belgium. No, I, England. I can tell you for free. The mighty three lions. Mediocre team by mediocre man. The mighty three lions. <laughs> We're looking forward to this year's World Cup in Russia to see how three lions will break a jinx and win this title for me. I have been a diehard supporter mm -hmm. of that particular team. And remember the first and last time they were crowned World Cup champions was in 1966, before even, I don't know whether my mother was born then, during the times of Sir Bobby Charlton. Well, away from the FIFA rankings, we also got the Chan 2018, the Africa Cup of Nations for local home-based players going on in Marrakesh, Morocco. And we got the results of that tournament. And we can be happy to say that Namibia are in the quarterfinals after they managed to defeat Ivory Coast and Uganda. But in Group A for those results, we got Morocco winning by four goals to nil against Mauritania. And then they won again against Guinea by three goals to one. Then Sudan coached by former FC Leopard Sudrava, yeah, is leading 2-1. They won against Guinea and also defeated Mauritania by one goal That was to such nil. an upset. Yeah, but but what's been <laughs> happening with the Giants in the name of Super Eagles of Nigeria? Their performance has been dismal. <laughs> Well, for Nigeria, they managed to win one game against Libya and they had a draw against their Mavubi of Rwanda. Then Libya defeated Equatorial Guinea by three goals to nil. And Rwanda also have four points after their win against Equatorial Guinea and that draw against Nigeria. And Nigeria stand a huge chance of being eliminated if they continue with the same end of awful show. But remember, of course, several quarterfinals are lined up this particular weekend. We shall be keeping an eye on them and keep you posted with the outcome of those particular fixtures. Remember, Kenya missing out on African Nations Championship after being stripped of the hosting rights of Chan, which was earmarked for this country starting January 12th. Yeah, but actually it's not the quarterfinals. We've got the group games in Group D, which will be going on today. We'll be having those matches. That is Burkina Faso versus Cameroon and then Angola versus Congo. But when you look overall in this group, you realize that Morocco, Sudan, they have got six points. They are heading into the quarterfinals. Zambia, Namibia, six points. They are heading to the quarterfinals. For Nigeria, as you have said, it's a very tricky one for them. They have got four points. Rwanda has got four points. Libya has got three points. So any of those ones can be making into the quarterfinals. Then we've got Congo leading group D with three points. Angola with one point. Burkina Faso, one point. And the indomitable Lions Cameroon, no point at all. They have not even won a single match in Morocco for the Chan. This is the touchline on Y25. My name is Maxwell Wasika alongside, of course, Robert Osoro. Remember, WhatsApp SMSing line 0700345457. Keep it sporty, though. The iconic gadget is on the table. And, of course, you can keep submitting your contributions with regards to what you think uh, as far as Kenyan football and even international sports is concerned, matters transfer. Keep tweeting as well at Wasike Maxwell at Osoro Bats at hashtag touchline Y2500. Remember, SMS line 22162, starting with the word touch. Well, our time is up for the sports pages, but we'll be glad to be talking about the Goma and the FC Continental Squad. We'll be talking about them in Fan Zone, where we can touch about who, who Goma is going to miss and who FC Leopard is going to miss. But if you are going to tease with us, what was your conversation like with Patrick Matasi? Patrick Matasi, remember, is the custodian for the Poster Rangers and he stood in between the post for the national team Arambe Stars during the Kafa Senior Challenge Cup and made heroic he saves that handed the team a title and his recent exploits have earned him a uh, trophy as far as Kenya Premier League awards is concerned. And of course, I talked to him, had an ex 
explosive chat with him and let's take a look and listen in and uh, even as he gets ambitious to going to Europe to follow the footsteps of his former compatriots Michael Ingenio Lungo is doing exceptionally nice in Spanish La Liga Victor Mugubi Wanyamo is playing even with the Spurs in English Premier League and uh, Patasi too is not left out as he seeks going abroad for professional football let's take a look This is the touchline on Y254. My name is Max Olwasike. Glad to speak to someone who forms an integral part as far as Kenyan football is concerned. Goalkeeper for the national team, Arambe Stars, and a man who emerged as, you know, overall goalkeeper of the year in 2017. He has had an exceptional year. Patrick Matas, good to speak to you. Happy New Year. How does it feel, of course, you know, handing the national team, Arambe Stars, the title during Sekafa Sina Challenge Cup, making heroic saves and, you know, also being voted as the overall goalkeeper of the year during the just concluded KPL award? How does it feel? Um, part of the game, I feel uh, so good because it was a superb performance in the uh, year 2017. So it's something that uh, I feel is like good. Uh, before the game, of course, during the tussle between Kenya and Zanzibar in the final of the Kafa Senior Challenge Cup at Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos County, did you feel pressured prior to the game, considering that you know uh, you are being relied upon for Kenya to win the title? If you compare the two matches between uh, Kenya and Burundi in Kisumu, then uh, Kenya versus Zanzibar, the Burundi match, semi-final match, was more tough than. Uh, the final one because uh, Burundi game all out to win that match but we came out as victors so there was a little bit pressure because the Kenyans were there watching they wanted the trophy most because we were playing in the home soil so there was a little bit some pressure as the game uh, started but as it progressed things were a bit uh, easy because we were leading the, the, the game We've had some little bit of transition in terms of goalkeeping. Of course, before we've had Gormaya goalkeeper Bonfaso Lochas, you know, the number one goalkeeper for the national team, Arambe Stars. But when Paul put the 61 year old Belgian international, took over the reins as tactician for the national team, a lot of people didn't expect you to be, you know, uh, standing between the post for the national team. Uh, do you feel pressured uh, being given a huge mantle like that? There was no pressure because uh, if you look at the the tournament came at the right time because I had uh, played some national matches uh, since uh, the league started. You know. So if you, I had played uh, around uh, five matches national team home and away. So to me there was no pressure. And then if you look at uh, the day we reported to camp, no one was uh, knowing that he was going to start the match. Until when our first match against Rwanda, when we travelled to Kamega, uh, the coach unveiled his squad two hours prior to the match. So I just saw my name on the sheet, and then they told me I'm starting the match. But my coach told me to just to play the, the match that I've been playing in my club. So there was uh, some movement in terms of. Uh, changing in uh, lineup because nobody expected to start the match but uh, the coach uh, trusted me and then he gave me the, the chance to start that match and that's why the performance uh, I had in Sakafa was superb because the coach had to believe in me. And you know, how does it feel you winning such a title with the national team Arambe Stars? Of course we've had some successful players who didn't win even uh, such kind of accolades with the national team Arambe Stars despite their prominence in footballing industry. Does it feel excellent? Yeah, it is excellent because uh, it was my first uh, Sakafa Senior Challenge. Uh, I came up as a Golden Glove keeper and uh, be best player. So that was a superb performance because uh, many players do normally play in national teams, you know. They just have cups, but uh, they end up not doing anything. But to me, it was uh, 
something that uh, he had expected. Because with good preparation and uh, focus, we just had to to win that trophy so that it can be a plus uh, in my career. And of course, the team you play for, Kenyan Premier League club, Poster Rangers finished fourth overall during the last campaign. I've just spoken to your tactician, Sami Pamzomola, and he remains optimistic that you can finish in top three come the next season. What are your expectations, even as you seek, you know, bettering on your performance from last season? Last season, we were aiming at taking the league uh, in terms of uh, winning the, the trophy. We prepared very well pre-season, but uh, things started coming somehow shaky in September because of in-house things, you know. So we we ended up drawing. Uh, it was around nine matches, consecutive nine matches, which made us to lose the trophy to reigning champions Gormai. Yes, but uh, this time round with the good preparation, you know, is now when we are setting the pre-season. You know? So with good preparation, then uh, after the precision coach and the staff will just come up and then he, with the plan, then he tells us that uh, this is what we are going to to look for. But to me, it's high time Post Rangers fraternity or Post Rangers family to win that trophy this season. But uh, I know with good precision and good preparation, everything on the right direction. I know we are going to challenge for this trophy this season. But even as you continue enjoying the privilege of being the first uh, goalkeeper for Poster Rangers, of course there is a new acquisition which will give you a run for your money. Do you look forward to a situation where uh, you know there will be stiff competition between two of you? Or it's uh, quality and uh, good health competition? Okay, to me, as a player, I normally believe that uh, a good player, or if you want to be a good player, you just have to accept to be to have a competition. Because if you look at uh, post right now, I was with Martin Musale in uh, yes. FC Leopards. He he was the one who made us to win the Go TV Shield. But right now, I'm working with him. He's also a good goalkeeper. So to me, if I see some pressure in my back, if that's the time when I have to work more. Because if you play around with the the number definitely you'll have just to lose it to your fellow player but i know that uh, with competition and support from the the three goalkeepers that we are here i know we are going to make it but all in all just come if i work hard and then i just accept to be pushed in terms of pressure and uh, competition and now, following your recent spectacular exploits, there has been quite an attraction from foreign clubs which have expressed an interest to acquire your services. Maybe kindly you bring us up to speed with regards to the same, which uh, clubs are these in particular that are interested in your services and how is the progress in terms of, you know, negotiations? Okay, as per now, if uh, you look at uh, our final match, uh, the Sakafa Senior Challenge, it was on 17th. Yes. From that time up to now, is now around one month. I had some uh, offers outside, okay, locally and uh, outside. So my agent told me not to rush because uh, he's the one taking care of everything. Yes. Um, I'll just talk about one, uh, the Turkey one. I was to travel to Turkey for two weeks trial, but. Uh, Visa, in terms of uh, documents, made me not to travel because uh, they were asking for hard copy of my visa, but we sent them the soft copy. So by the time the hard copy arrived there, they had already finalized everything. So they, they told me up to June is when I can travel. But uh, there is another offer my agent is trying to follow up. That definitely will come up with good news at the at the end of uh, let's say this week or next week. God willing. Are you are you optimistic that uh, you can strike a deal with one of the clubs that are interested and chasing for your services? And you know there has been an outcry with regards to Kenyan players, you know, not performing very well uh, beyond our borders. Maybe what do you think? Okay, as per now, if you look at where I've been performing since uh, I joined Kenyan Premier League 2011. Up to now, I've been improving gradually because uh, I knew what was at stake. Okay, to me, I've tried to gauge myself, 
I know now I'm, I'm ready to go and have a different challenge somewhere. If I'm given that chance to play somewhere else, I just have just to give out my effort and work more in terms of playing and uh, making sure that uh, the win titles has been uh, in home soil. But I know if a challenge comes, I'm ready to cope with it. But we'll find out, find out that uh, some of the Kenyan players, we normally rush. Yes. Uh, definitely when you rush, the conclusive out there is not favoring you as here in home. But uh, I know that I'm ready to handle that uh, pressure, God willing. Now, you previously played for FC Leopards, one of the giant clubs locally, of course, alongside Gormaya, which I enjoy huge support uh, following. Do you regret leaving the den? 2014. Yes. The, we managed to read the finals, but we lost the match to KCC of Uganda. When we come, we came back. Uh, you know, so many things were talked. You know, but the coach came up with a plan. From that match, I had not played until the last match in Mombasa against Bandar. We won three-two. If you look at the way things happened that time. I don't regret leaving a Leopards. They gave me the platform to be who I am. I respect them. But uh, to me, I can say that uh, that was not the right time to leave FC Leopards. If they could have given me more time, uh, they were the one who could have been enjoying this uh, performance. But I don't regret because uh, each and every day, a player might move from this club to another club. If you compare FC Leopards uh, with Poster Rangers, there's only one thing that uh, has changed in terms of football or goalkeeping department. When I was in FC Leopards, we, they used to change the goalkeeper trainers, you know, from this one. After three months, they yes. changed, you know. But since I came to Poster Rangers in 2015, I've worked with only one goalkeeper trainer who knows me very well. When it comes to you know, it is. Uh, time for pushing in terms of training he knows when uh, it's time for doing other drills in terms of movement he knows so he knows me very uh, much well than uh, when i was in a slippers because it could take some two to three months you know working with the different coach and the league is still going on so post i've worked with one goalkeeper trainer who understands me very well and understands him very him very well but all in all, uh, FC still uh, is my family, you know. And there have been many publications locally indicating how you've come from far, from, you know, zero to hero, from grass to grace. Talk to us about your journey up to where uh, you are right now and in terms of mentorship and inspiration. Are you drawing this goalkeeping prowess from? I finished my high school in 2009. And uh, when I was in high school, I used to play volleyball. <laughs> That's quite interesting. Uh, and then uh, after my high school, I just came up and said that, uh, you know, locally there's no volleyball teams out there. I just had, I said that there's no need of uh, killing my career. So I just decided to play uh, football in terms of goalkeeping. There's one coach called Fanny Levungo. Came home when I'm in the Shukagan plantations, you know. Oh, you are sugarcane <laughs> yeah, farmer? 2009, uh, December. Yes. He told me there is a tournament going on in West Sugar Company uh, Department uh, Tournament. He came and then I was there in the evening. They, we played a match there. We won. You know. Then uh, 2010, West Sugar came up and said, no, this is the right time we can have a team. Kudos to uh, my team manager. With sugar company, you know. he did a very good job uh, in terms of supporting players. We formed a team. We were, we played uh, in NSL. That year we performed very well. We were number four in NSL, and uh, we were the finalist of uh, Moy Golden Cup. Uh, that night, the Go TV. Yes. So after our match against the Park in Nyai National Stadium, we lost two nil. Uh, the final match. People wanted for my signature, but. Uh, I had not to rush because I was still a young boy. But the performance they saw there was superb. 
2010 December the FC Lakers came calling they wanted my signature but uh, I was uh, still a young boy and then I talked to one of my uncle called uh, Caleb Zunguti he told me to come to Nairobi and then sign for the Slippers. It was on 6th of January when I sealed uh, a two-year contract with the Slippers. I was training but I uh, had no chance to play until six months uh, when uh, the windows opened. I was even leaving a seat but uh, things changed when uh, I was playing, when the Slippers were playing against Poster Rangers, these Poster Rangers. Uh, it was under flat lights. My fellow goalkeeper TM uh, got injured. Then uh, I was given a chance. That match ended in uh, nil nil. That's 2011. But uh, after that match, we played against Kopaka. We won 3 1. From there, we went to Tanzania to play a friendly match against Simba. We drew nil nil. From there is when Coops said I'm the first goalkeeper of, of Slippers. So from that time, you know, now the fans had believed in me up to 2012, you know, we have been working in the tight condition there in FC Leopards. I renewed my contract in 2013. I've been in FC Leopards for four seasons, but uh, my contract elapsed on in 2014, but they wanted to renew my contract, although I told them I can't renew the contract because poster were there talking to me, they want my services. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened, but uh, they published our names. Uh, those ones who are released, I just said it's okay. So the fans said that I should not be released. I told them no. Let the me team go. has decided. Yeah, the team has decided and the officials are ready with what they've done. I moved to Poster Rangers. Uh, we were to play the Kenyan Premier League 2015, but because uh, of uh, the Rangos that were there, we had to play again in NSL 2015, but uh, God helped us to be the winners uh, and then we managed to be promoted to Kenyan Premier League in 2016. If you look at the way we worked with uh, Coach Zico, I've worked with, he was my first coach to give me a national team call-up in 2011. So he gave me that uh, belief that I can play, I can do anything for the, for, for the team. So since that time, that's why I'm up to here. And of course, a lot of young people are looking up to you, drawing huge inspiration from you. I was up country during festive season, and even young kids during this off-season tournament are saying that, you know, I want to be like Patrick Matassi. How does it feel? And probably what's your message to them? As even they seek, you know, bettering on their career and ensuring that their profession is top-notch. As long as you are, uh, you want to be a professional player or a professional or a sportsman, first of all you just have to work hard. There's no shortcut in terms of being a sportsman. Even if you follow me from here to my house, you have an evening training, you know, because uh, I've been working twice a day and it's now paying. So if you want just to succeed in this life, you just have to work hard, be disciplined, and just make yourself a professional player. Just to doing other things that uh, might ruin your career. If you train and then you rest, that's the only way you can succeed in this life. So those who also believe that they can be the next Matasi after around 10 years to come, they should just work hard, focus, and have an ambition that one of these fine days I'm going to be like this man. Finally, how has your family supported you? Your siblings, your parents, and uh, your spouse, in case you have one. <laughs> how have they supported your career? Okay, they have been there, especially my mom. When I was living with slippers, my mom, my mom was not even having dinner. She was not happy. Fast. She was not happy at all. Because uh, she was thinking that uh, now I'm leaving a team that has uh, made me to be who I am. She was somehow sick, not happy, sick, talking, but <laughs> I convinced her. I told her, Mom, I'm leaving from a slippery, but you know, some good things might come on the way. It took me around two to three months just with talking her, you know. I told her, 
post are giving me permanent job and pension of which I might use it up to my retirement age but she was not uh, accepting it but she came to realize what I was telling her was right in 2016 when I won the golden glove I just took the golden glove to her she celebrated you know that time with my my girl okay, who is my wife and my son you know they have been there when it's time for training they, they normally ask me at what time are you training I tell them tomorrow training is at nine where so they give you much needed support yeah they tell me when it's time to wake up just wake up and do it when they ask me they ask me at what time are you training in the evening I tell them you know today I'm going for aerobics in the gym at what time it starts at five and then they tell me at around four to prepare and leave so when you have a, a humble family and supporting family in terms of career then definitely you succeed but if you have uh, that girl that is not ready to to work and give you that humble time then definitely you'll fail and that's why my mom is superb even my my sisters have been there with me they have been calling me and every day especially the Sekafa senior challenge final match i called my mom at around 5 a.m in the morning i told her mom it's not at uh, down so do this uh, just pray for me but this time we're having a final today she told me it's okay she watched the match on tv right yeah she watched uh, <laughs> you know, she told me you are going to win but uh, it's not going to be an easy match after the prayers she told me you will win but uh, after extra time so she predicted what she, came to pass finally yeah she predicted because uh, after the prayers she told me it's not going to be an easy match and you saw what happened she watched the match she was even <laughs> okay that's a family family <laughs> thing <laughs> she must have been uh, over excited that evening yeah that evening she ran you know she used to run the, those days you know she was like going mad you know she didn't know what has happened with the boy she just saw me save the penalties and then still celebrating as i ran after that she called me i was not picking the call up to up to monday morning when she called me she told me she wants to come to nairobi but i told her no <laughs> i'm coming you know sure yeah sure. so they have been so supportive to me you remember him for his tremendous show during the Sekafa Senior Challenge Cup in December 2017. Of course, his heroic exploits and saves for the national team Arambe Stars, handing the team a title for the Sekafa Senior Challenge Cup when the two teams, of course, against Zanzibar, were locking horns in the final at Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos County. And also, he has emerged as the overall goalkeeper of the year in 2017 during Kenya Premier League Awards. And of course, the man is Patrick Matasi. That's why he's featuring on a segment, The Champ, on the touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasika. Patrick Matasi, glad to have spoken to you, bro. Thank All you. the best. We shall be looking forward to uh, inquire on your progress and even as you see, going abroad to play professional football, just like the rest of other Kenyans in the name of Victor Mugubi Wanyama. Alan Wanga, who has featured there and is now back home. Uh, McDonald Mariga. Michael Olunga now is in Spanish La Liga Girona, having scored a hat-trick. Thank you for speaking to The Touchline on Y254. All the best. Thank and you. cheers. Thank you.